well, not too many more weeks, you could see some of this stuff on the, on the link. So what I'll be doing is just sampling going from right to left through the season of, of butterflies and then dragonflies. And then last year marked 23 years of be observing dragonflies. And so this is on two sides here is the flight season that covers those 23 years, the earliest and latest I've seen dragonflies. And then for any of those that are really into uh, stewardship on your property, I've got to invite butterflies to your garden so you can pick up some, some tips on to, uh, how you can help them. I'll another step. Anybody else need to check? Okay. Are you ready for the light? As soon as Sharon... <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that gives me a good. Well, of course, I guess you won't be able to see that much, but. <laughs> no. Twisted, I think, a little bit. So don't. Oh, I think that's Sharon's thing. I think. Yeah, it's it's a kind of messed up. What's it doing? Oh, never, never mind. No, it's okay. There. Okay, now lights. Okay. And then. Okay. Marley. Are you ready? Yes. Oh. Okay. I guess you probably could leave. There. Probably that pretty back one could maybe be. Left on. I don't know. No, that's okay. Okay, okay. Anyway, uh, because most butterflies lead very secretive lives, we generally only see their adult behavior. So I'm going to show you, starting with uh, the uh, great spangled fritillary that's dorsal basking. On cooler mornings, they become like original solar collector and trying to warm up by keeping their wings fully open. Another behavior is nectaring. Uh, unlike uh, caterpillars that are eating machines, the adult butterflies have a proboscis <coughs> that they you know, slip, slurp like a straw. It has to be liquid form, either nectar or uh, water. That was, oh, that was, that was a uh, tiny age skipper. <coughs> And then uh, we had left out during the uh, early oriole season, a little bit later, some oranges. And we came back from an Atasca butterfly count, and there were several northern pearly eyes, OJ slurping. <coughs> and then the next year we had a jelly and orange feeder both, and just like a duck to water, the northern pearly eyes, or MPEs as we call them for short, we're getting great joy. And there's times when Marlene, toward evening, would have to kind of rescue, almost like the Bay or tar pits, where someone would get kind of stuck in the jelly and she'd have to kind of free them. I don't think your mic is we're picking you up too well. Either speak a little louder or oh. shift it. Marlene, I can hear you back here real well. Oh, there. Oh, <coughs> oh wait. <laughs> well, we no. Okay. Wait, oops. popular activity, especially after it's rained on our gravel roads, is puddling. And that's mostly the males are getting some nutrients that help them with reproduction. And here is our three, or no, uh, two orange sulfurs and two or three clouded sulfurs that are all puddling. And so on, on our uh, rain, rainy uh, days in the summer, watch out and kind of drive slowly around where there's puddling butterflies. Then, of course, the purpose of an adult butterfly is to mate. Here are uh, 
pair of silvery checker spots feeding, and then eggs are produced. And because everyone knows what a monarch caterpillar looks like, I'm showing you a little bit of a, throwing you a little curve. This is a black swallowtail caterpillar, and here's what the adult looks like. Now we're going to go over a brief fast forward through a typical butterfly year. <clears throat> and we start with overwintering, which could begin within like three weeks from now. This is a great comma, in fact, with the angling, you need to know your punctuation. So that's a comma, and it, and it is a great comma. Also overwintering, Compton tortoiseshell, a morning cloak, and Wilbert's tortoiseshell. Now those had <coughs> emerged sometime the previous late summer, early fall, and then they've snugged into crevices of trees, un unheated garages, uh, wood piles, etc. And then on warmer days, as spring is breaking out, they, they're out and about. So now we go to early spring, Canadian tiger swallowtail, or CTS as we call them. In the southern part of the state, you have <coughs> eastern tiger swallowtails, but we're on the east, the southern range of the Canadian. Mustard white in the spring version does have veining. A former common name was veined white, but other whites, I guess, have veins. So the spring version has nice gold veins. And then here, a mating pair of Olympia marbles, and when they're very fresh, they have that rosy tinge. In fact, they have a very short season, only five or so days, whereas most uh, adult butterflies live as an adult seven to 10 days or so. Monarchs are a major exception. Their regular generation is one month long, the generation that goes down to Mexico lives for six to eight months. Another spring butterfly is a eastern pine elephant. And then a uh, famous um, uh, butterfly <coughs> guy, guy named in the Peterson series called Klotz, K L O T S, said when spring azures emerge, it's truly spring. Now, the variety we have up here is technically a northern azure. The true spring azures are a bit further south, but around here we have northern azures. And this is on wild strawberry, so you can see how uh, probably small it is. In fact, many butterflies are pretty, pretty small. And then here is another blue, a silvery blue, which back in the slide era really challenged the ability to capture the color because it's almost like a pearl laying over blue. And then, just as there are confusing sparrows in the bird world, they are confusing dusky wings in the butterfly world. This is a juvenile's <coughs> dusky wing, a fairly large size. And here's an example, too, where butterflies have either hooked or clubbed antenna Maws are either string-like or just a feather-like. So that's one way of telling a butterfly from a moth. In fact, some people consider skippers as kind of partially butterfly, partially moth. Arctic skipper, this is uh, very small but very distinctive. It's the only skipper that looks like that. A lot of skippers are, are variations on the same theme, meaning they're pretty confusing as Marlene can attest. <laughs> oh yeah, in fact, this is the most common spring butterfly we have, a hobobo, and it is more typical skipper coloration. The harvester is unique among the uh, six or seven hundred butterflies species in North America. It's the only butterfly that has a carnivorous caterpillar. In other words, it feeds on, on um, uh, the aphids that attend to ants. 
and here you, it is actually puddling here. It's fairly small, and, and because it is carnivorous, I guess that's what got its common name, harvester. In Eastern Tail of Blue, you can see right there the little tails that it has, and this is definitely a male with that nice blue coloration. And then here you get two for the price of one, a mating pair of silver border. This is the dorsal or upper, and this is the ventral or lower of that mating pair. And they are, they are smaller uh, for layers. It looks like somebody has practiced calligraphy on their rings. And then here is a uh, metal fritillary, which is a bit more common than the uh, silver border. Then here was a real bonanza, actually, on one of our butterfly counts. He was kind of on this ragwort, which was covered with uh, silvery checker spots. Previously, I had shown you a mating pair, but this is just nectaring. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, then the northern crescent, again, you're seeing the underside and the upper of a mating pair, and by far, that is the most common butterfly I see in the entire year. In fact, uh, probably two out of every five butterflies I see during the year. In fact, I've reported on the uh, our count season that it's really by far the most common butterfly. Here is a American lady, and as the saying goes, American ladies have large eye spots. And then, <laughs> and then uh, here's a, add this uh, another um, uh, adult behavior. This is a red admiral that's mineralizing on my sweaty tripod. Like back in the um, my slider, I always used a tripod either as a monopod or if it was a very cooperative butterfly or drag flight, I would have it as a true tripod. And it, in fact, there is slurping away. And I think it was about 15 or 20 minutes. I had to really be patient because it didn't want to leave. Uh -huh. And then back in the days when uh, uh, newspapers ran black and white pictures in the summer, they would usually have one picture of a white emerald. And you could see it could actually be called an American emerald, red, white, and blue. And see how colorful it actually is, even though it is the same use. It used to be just in black and white they'd ever run those pictures. This is the uh, monarch mimic known as a viceroy, and there's a diagonal line that, that shows it. And then if you could actually see a size comparison, it is smaller than monarchs. And uh, monarchs have to feed on a variety of, of milkweeds, but the Viceway imitates them. They don't feed on that, but they hope it will fake out predators and thinking, oh, I don't want to munch on that. There's several satyr or ice spots. This is a little wood satyr, a common ringlet, and then, oh yeah, this at 250 of a second, I caught this proboscis being reeled up. It's almost like a hose. But just instantaneously, it is this for this long dash, it's reeling it up and then it's going to fly away. Because again, for a lot of these skippers, their proboscis is about the same length as their body. And can you imagine <coughs> trying to fly around with something like, like that dangling down? So it's just incredible that here, of the thousands of butterfly picks, this is the only one I was able ever to capture that. Now, this is the summer pure white version of the um, mustard white, and so we're now in the, the heart of summer, when that's mo when most of the butterfly activity occurs. And for many butterflies, there's just one generation a year, so that if you're not out there when they're out, well, you don't see them right here. <coughs> in American copper, uh, and, and again, all coppers have, have kind of a coppery color to them. This is a purplish copper. And then uh, for hair streaks, and this is a coral hair streak, and most uh, hair streaks get that name because it looks like they have actually little hairs on their on their wings. And, and by sh at this point, uh, moths and butterflies are in the Lepidoptera family of insects, and they're the only animals 
that have like little roofing shingles covering their wings so that if as a kid if you handle the moth and you say oh there's moth dust it actually was almost like little moth shingles coming off <coughs> an Acadian hair streak is Marlene's favorite butterfly and it uh, its caterpillars feed on willows where most other uh, hair streaks such as the Edwards, and this is nectaring on, on lead plant. Anyway, uh, most uh, of the hair streaks, their caterpillars feed on oaks. Now here is the, a summer azure. And then this is the underside of a great spangle with the nice white creamy band. The first slide I showed you was of the dorsal basking. Here is a mating pair of Atlantis frillaries on blue flag. Oh yeah, this looks like a jumbo jet. This is a eastern comma. You can see it had a slightly different comma shape than the gray comma. In common buckeye, and it generally doesn't reside around here. It has to come up from further south. So. Um, there's some years we, we don't have any at all, some years we have maybe up to 10, so it's not very common, but it looks like a tropical butterfly. In fact, there is a tropical buckeye that's virtually identical, but we get the so-called common buckeye up here. Oh yeah, here's a northern pearly eye that's sap sucking. I showed you orange sucking, but this is sap, or sap sucking. Try seeing that fast. <laughs> and back to uh, another another satyr, uh, a eye brown. It's coming. And then the largest of the satyrs or of uh, the uh, eye spots are common wood nymphs. And through our count years, they generally were the second most common for many of the of our years. Here is an unmistakable skipper known as a silver spot, and you don't even need close focusing binoculars to be able to see that silver spot. A European skipper, which is becoming more common all the time. In fact, uh, Larry Weber, that has the book that I have 96 of my pictures in, he ended up stop, stopping butterfly counts because he was getting thousands and thousands of them. Last year on our deep portage county, you know that's only 30 some miles from here, 90 percent of all the butterflies we had that day were European skippers and their larval plant is um, Timothy grass that I say is my nemesis because I have hay fever. <laughs> and Usually our counts, especially the deep portage one, comes at the time when it is in full pollen. A peck skipper. <coughs> Here's a, a Delaware skipper, and look at what on this thistle head, all the other <laughs> insects that are just nectaring like mad there. Now we turn to the fall, and on Joe Pie Weed, which is an important nectar source in the fall, is a cabbage white and any gardeners. There are cycles that they go through where sometimes they totally mow off all your plants, you know, of a certain, you know, certain species of plants. And then this is the fall version with kind of the greenish tinge of a uh, clouded sulfur. And then last fall, there was a big eruption again of uh, painted ladies. See, they have a lot of, of eye spots, not like the American lady. And here you can clearly see the proboscis. And uh, a couple years earlier, there was a big outbreak heading north, and then radar in Denver picked up about a 70-mile wide swath that had to be millions of them trying to fly back south because just like with logs, <coughs> they cannot withstand freezing temperatures. But the next year, we had no painted ladies, but then toward the end of last year, they were just everywhere. 
Oh yeah, here is showing uh, the northern limit of milkweed and all eastern part of the country funnels down to to Mexico and I found out today that they have measured how many hectares overwintering there's but because of the two deaths down there recently there's too much of an international brouhaha so they're kind of not releasing those numbers but I'm hoping they go up because those of you that read my article last um, late last fall it was just a phenomenal year for migratory ones. In fact, already, apparently some of them are leaving the overwandering and starting to come back to South Texas where they then made lay eggs and then it takes up to a couple generations to get back up here. And then suddenly from the middle of um, July and there on, uh, the migratory generation that then knows that it's supposed to head to Mexico. In fact, here is Blazing Star being nectar on by a migratory, and there's a lot of effort. In fact, I have people that come up that say, John, I, I'm planting milkweed, which is very important, but it's very important, too, that you have plants available, such as Blazing Star and other things, in late summer, early fall for the migratory monarchs to nectar on. And so that's a thing, too, that people need to, to increase the planting of, of um, flowers that are out in the fall. Oh yeah, here's where um, I show a little distress. Because in 2003, this male bronze copper was in this little wetland along the ditch of where 40 and 2 are near Spider Lake. Six years later, this is what it looked like when unauthorized ATV trail and even though this is a wetland it's been mowed down to bare ground so there goes that butterfly and, and others that were there present and then a little further on this is what the unauthorized ATV track looked like and what is now done it's promoted more extensive mowing and spraying down to bare ground. So because so many county and township roads even have had this happen, it's more important that people, oh yeah, and here, well here's a butterfly desert. <laughs> That's green is a golf course lawn. And no, there's nothing there for a butterfly. And because you're not in a city, you don't have to have it down to grass like that. But, and you don't have to be necessarily this extreme in, in advertising you have a butterfly garden or having this thick a profusion of wildflowers. But here from 1999 is a little part of our quote yard with the bergamot. Uh, Marlene had planted this and in the last few years it isn't coming up anymore. So things go through the cycle. But here, you can do things in your own yard as a, as a steward to help butterflies. And if you're helping butterflies, who knows what other kind of things, since they're a very showy indicator of how, go, how things are going with your habitat. Anyway, you may not have a harvester on your hat, <laughs> or a coral hair streak slurping up sweat on your finger, or an American copper trying to read the read, read, uh, read the time. Uh, there you can see those. I'm pointing to the proboscis. It's getting some sweat on a Bemidji count when I was really sweating like mad. Uh, or a northern crescent on your ankle. Or an Atasca. You may not have a northern azure hitchhiking on a trail there. But look around, such as. Uh, our grandson, this is down in Omaha on Painted Lady, or a purple uh, co-flower was a Painted Lady. There was Jimmy, age eight, and then he was joined by his brother Dan, age six, and um, things have, they've grown up a bit. Jimmy is 35, Dan <laughs> is, is 33, and here's Danny up here with his eight-month-old 
son, Jonathan, looking at a, a purple cum flower at our place. Oh yeah, and last year, Jonathan turned 14. So time is really marching along. But, anyway, but look around because you might see fantastic Baltimore checker spot. It doesn't look like it even belongs around here because it is just so incredible. And so you're actually getting two shots. This is the dorsal and this is what the ventral looks. It is just totally incredible. And uh, it's my favorite. But if I didn't mention that the uh, Olympia marbles are my, probably my second favorite. But they all are, are neat. <laughs> and with that, this we have a brief change of slide trays, so... Do you have a trip Yep. I have to avoid not tripping over yeah. this table. <laughs> You're good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, turn, turn, well, turn it off, honey. Oh, clear off? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can switch it around. Yeah. I don't switch trays, so he has to come. Oh, he just has to store it. Yeah, yeah. 